who needs what. His article is specifically talking about the top contenders in college football per the Vegas betting odds and kind of going down the list there of what those schools need. This is inspired by that, but I want to give a disclaimer here. We could probably say offensive or defensive line for every single school we're about to talk about here. I'm going to do my best not to do that. We're going to just try and talk about more so what I would like to see them address. So it may not be the most pressing need, but if I were the GM, if something horribly wrong happened and they threw me the keys to your roster, this is how I would put it together. And this would be the priorities I would go out and address. Let's start out on the 40 acres, man. The Texas Longhorns, Steve Sarkeesian got the people going last year, man. Like, it, it was provocative last year in Austin with how Texas made a run last year. Silenced a lot of doubters. Quinn Ewers throwing darts. Like, it was an aerial show. Vibes were high in Texas. Vibes were very high on the 40 acres. The offense was elite. However, what I think gets overlooked about what made Texas so solid last year was what they had in the trenches, baby. Tavondre Sweat had a sick chain that I think says no sweat, or maybe it says make him sweat. Either way, it's dope. He was like close to 400 pounds. He was a run stopper and a half. Byron Murphy, another All-American defensive tackle. Both those individuals, good for them. They're going to go get paid in the NFL. So with that being the case, those two individuals that helped contribute to a top five uh, run defense last year where you allowed less than three yards of carry, they're gone. You got to replenish that. And to make matters worse, or to make matters more urgent, I should say, as you move into the SEC, everyone talks about big boy football. You know, that's kind of the label. And you're saying, yeah, we can play that. We just beat Alabama last year by 10 at their crib. That's phenomenal. But you have to make sure that you replenish and have those big boys to make that move into the SEC, which is, of course, that big boy conference. I think Texas will be aggressive here. I think they're going to be attractive here when it comes to courting potential defensive tackles. But nonetheless, the offense is going to score points, but the defensive line is going to be the difference maker, going to be the, uh, the end-all, be-all for them, I believe, when it comes to what they're going to do that first year in the SEC. Speaking of the SEC, Alabama. Crimson Tide, we talk about it a lot on this show. They are watching how the, uh, the transfer portal did to them what it did to them that first cycle around. They're just you know, rubbing their hands together, waiting patiently, and now they're about to go into attack mode. They will be buyers. They will be shopping spree mode. I have to believe in Tuscaloosa. That secondary, I fully believe, will get addressed. They got some youth back there. They got some guys they feel good about, but still probably going to address that a little bit. Again, if it were me, I would like to see Alabama go out and add another pass catcher for Jalen Milrow. Because as good as Washington was last year at quarterback, they were especially dangerous because you had three different dudes you had to worry about hurting you any given time. And so if you're a defense, you can't just give attention to Roma Dunze. I mean, you can do it, but if you do, Jalen McMillan's going to get open. Jalen Polk's going to get open. Jack Westover's going to get open. And so for Alabama, they have some options. Jeremy Bernard looked like a stud in that A-day. Kobe Prentice, you've heard great things about him all fall camp. I'd love to see them add one more wide receiver to help maximize this Kalen DeBoer offense and just truthfully help Jalen Milrow that much more with his progression within this scheme itself. So secondary, yes, probably the greater need. Wide receiver, though, I'd love to see them take a swing and add somebody in that department. Michigan. We've talked about Michigan for a while on this show, man. We, we kind of have a question mark at quarterback. And I think if you were to take inventory of what they have in that locker room, in that quarterback room in Ann Arbor, I think Alex Orgy is... Right now, I'd have to believe the betting favorite to win that job if they played a game tomorrow. I think Alex Orgy is a good option. You hear people talk about his arm strength. You hear people talk about his ability running the football. We saw that at different times last year. He is a good option. With that being said, as much as the production is unproven in 2024 for Michigan, there's still some really key foundational pieces to this team. Defensively, we talk about it a lot. Mason Graham, uh, Kenneth Grant, Will Johnston, offensively, Colston Loveland is going to be preseason, all everything for them out there in Ann Arbor. Donovan Edwards, like there, there's a lot of pieces here to where I think if a great option becomes available, you owe it to yourself at Michigan to go out and, and make a pitch to bring that guy to Ann Arbor. The criteria I'm looking for, if I'm a Michigan fan, I want someone experienced. Because Alex Orgy, man, he, he could be phenomenal for you. He could be the guy that takes you where you want to go. And I mean, there, there's a question mark as to what he's going to be long term. But again, he could be phenomenal. If you go out and grab someone in the portal, I think you're saying we want to go with something we know is going to be successful. We want to go with a known commodity. Probably also would lean a little bit more on the arm talent side of things. You're not questioning Alex Orgy's ability to run the football. I think you are questioning what he does stretching the field. 
That's a, a very vague question mark because we haven't gotten to see a lot of them just yet. We'll get a chance to watch them in the spring game, but we might have a different tune on this this time next week. But I would be surprised if the right guy jumps in the portal if Michigan doesn't make a push there to upgrade at quarterback. Got a chance to make some moves. Ole Miss. I mean, Lane Kiffin does what Lane Kiffin does in the portal, man. Like, he's got that moniker Portal King for a reason. Mike Norvell, I believe, shares that label with him. But if you're Ole Miss, they will be active even in the second portal window. It's how they get down in Oxford. More power to him. God bless them. Replace what you lost is, I think, the the sentiment if you're Ole Miss. Because you had Quinshawn Judkins walk out the door. And again, I don't think it was something that they were overwhelmingly shocked by when he did leave Ole Miss. But still, that's a 1,000-yard rusher in the SEC that you just lost. And that offense last year, as much as Jackson Darty likes to throw the ball around the yard, as much as Trey Harris is going to get a lot of buzz when it comes to the preview magazines, they still are a 56% of the time running the football team. They still want to pound the rock. They still want to make you say, uncle, on that line of scrimmage, what they do offensively. So with that being the case, go out and get your running back. It's going to be a very interesting market. It doesn't sound like right now they're in the Damian Martinez sweepstakes. That could change by the time we get off the air. But Henry Parrish, transfer running back from Miami, was previously at Ole Miss. That's the guy I'm zeroing in on. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't end up going back to Oxford. Comfortable within that locker room, have to believe. And uh, he can play now. He can play. I think that he's a guy that could be a, a instant impact contributor for you. and They would bring him in to do just that. He's not Quinshawn Judkins, but he can more than get the job done for you if you're an Ole Miss fan. Last one to talk about here, Oregon. Similar to what I said at the top of this segment, you could say offensive or defensive line for every single one of these teams and every single head coach, I have to believe, would say, yeah, we'll take another guy there. We'll take another big boy up front by nature of how this season is about to be with the expanded playoff. Oregon... Jesse, Simon, Jesse Simonton talks about this in his article as well. They're not ex as experienced as they were a season ago within the middle of that defense. They got some good pass rushers now. Mateo Uyunglele, Jordan Birch, like they got some speed off the edge. I think what they want to do in the Big Ten is try and solidify the core of that defense a little bit more with this portal cycle. They'll be attractive to a lot of guys that want to go contend for a national championship. They're, they'll be attractive to a lot of guys that want to help their draft stock go into the Big Ten Conference and playing against some of the best talent in the country. The thing with the defensive line is like just what I said at the top of this thing. You'll, you're never going to say no to adding another defensive tackle. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be the New England Patriots from the early 2000s, the Brady New England Patriots. You'd still say, yeah, we'll take another big boy up front. We'll take another guy to help stop the run for us. It's like butter. Like, I've never once sat down at a restaurant and said, man, I wish I had less butter on this. You'll always take more butter. It's great. There, there's no way that's ever going to be a net negative. It's always a positive. You also want to armor the car as much as possible for the stretch this season's going to be. Because if Oregon wins the national championship, it might be a 17-game season. You don't play 17 games with a 100% healthy roster, much less a 100% healthy defensive line, which is arguably the most physically demanding position on the entire football field. Probably a conversation with them in the offensive line for that category. So expect them to be a player for uh, the defensive tackles that become available when it comes to this, uh, this portal cycle. They were in the Walter Nolan sweepstakes early on last cycle. Walter Nolan obviously went to Ole Miss. Bottom line, they're shopping. They're going to be on the move for some of those top big nasties in the middle. So to recap it for you, Texas and Oregon, both looking for defensive tackles. If you were asking me who they would go after, Alabama, I fully expect them to address some needs on defense. If it's me, I'd love to see them go get another wide receiver to add to that mix to help Jalen Milrow. Michigan, they don't have to get a quarterback, but if a great option becomes available, I think they'll go after him. And then Ole Miss, replace what you lost, man. Quinshawn Judkins is gone. I think they'll go get Henry Parrish, and I think that's going to be the way that Ole Miss goes to try and replace a 1,000-yard rusher. That's still who they want to be offensively. As much as you see the highlights with them throwing the ball downfield, they still want to be a running the football kind of team. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.